With a massive 14 inch display, eight built-in speakers and a powerful Snapdragon CPU, this tablet is turning out to be a great option for gaming, work, media playback, and even emulation. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be checking out the all new Xiaomi Pad 6 Max 14. Definitely a mouthful, but this tablet is absolutely massive. And I believe this was kind of released to compete with the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab Ultra line, but this one's definitely coming in with a much lower price tag. And overall, this is a great tablet if you want a larger screen tablet. Coming in with a massive 14 inch 120 hertz IPS display with a resolution of 1800 by 2880. Definitely on par with some of the larger laptops out there, but it's coming in much lighter and thinner. And along with the tablet itself, they do include a 67 watt PD fast charger. And one of the cool things about the new technology they have here is reverse wired charging. This will do up to 33 watts out of the USB type C port. That way you could charge your phone up from the tablet and with a massive 10,000 milliamp hour battery, you've still got juice to spare. Xiaomi also makes a magnetic keyboard case and this will come in really handy for using this larger screen tablet. Once it's set up, it looks something like this. It does support multi-touch gestures with the included trackpad here, and it connects over the three pogo pins on the bottom of the Pad 6 Max. I'm not a huge fan of using cameras on tablets, but if you are, there is a 50 megapixel camera around back and a 20 megapixel selfie camera up front. And when it comes to the specs of the new Xiaomi Pad 6 Max 14, for the CPU, they're using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It would have been really nice if they had the Gen 2 here, but this does offer plenty of performance. And they have released a few different storage and RAM variants. You can pick this up with either 8 gigs of RAM, 12, or 16. And the storage is also going to reflect that at 256, 512, or 1 terabyte. But all of them are using UFS 3.1. We've got a beautiful 14-inch IPS 120 hertz display with a resolution of 1800 by 2880. It supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision up to 600 nits of brightness, and this actually has eight speakers built in. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. We also have Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and NFC, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery with 67 watt quick charging capabilities and 33 watt reversed wired charging. And the tablet itself is running Android 13 with MIUI Pad 14 installed. So yeah, since we've got that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the overall system is really snappy. And by the way, this is actually the 12 gig version. So you can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but 12 is more than enough here. And even if you went with the 8 gigabyte version, you're not going to notice a difference between performance. Really comes down to that extra storage. Versions sold in the US will have Google Play pre-installed. We can access all of our favorite apps from there. And in this video, we will test out some native Android gaming and emulation. But one thing I always like to check out with these tablets or basically any Android device is the Widevine version. If you're not familiar with Widevine, basically Android does have video DRM for HD content. A lot of tablets on the market that are sold really cheap on Amazon and eBay don't have the correct level. But with the new Xiaomi Pad 6 Max Pro, we do have level one, which means we can do HD content from our favorite streaming apps like HBO, Netflix, and Hulu. So we don't have to worry about that here. Speaking of video playback, I did want to show you a little performance here with some YouTube video playback. Now we don't have a 4K display, but it doesn't mean we can't go up to 4K here. Still going to stress out that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and this will run 4K 60 HDR video all day long without dropping a frame. And when it comes to the eight speaker system they opted to use in this, it is awesome. It definitely sounds better than the new Galaxy Tab S9 and the sound really does fill the room. We've got a lot of case to work with here. Even though it's a thin design, it is putting out some bass and the picture quality is amazing. So obviously we are working with a massive display here and it would be nice to take advantage of all of this screen real estate with extra apps. Luckily, we've got a workstation mode built in here. So once we enable this, we can have multiple apps up and running. It's basically like a desktop mode for this tablet here. And this will allow us to have multiple apps running in different windows. So if I wanted to browse the web, watch a video, edit a document, and play a game at the same time, I would go into workstation mode. That way I can have all of these windows. They are resizable. Unfortunately, there's no snap feature that I've seen yet. Would have been nice to have that, but you know, hopefully in a firmware update down the road, they can add something like that with workstation mode. 
but it's nice to have something like this built in. Especially if you're going to be using it with a keyboard add-on like we have here. Next thing I wanted to show off were a few benchmarks that I ran on this tablet. First up, we've got Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 1,733. Multi 4,284, so this has fallen right in line with other Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chips that we've tested here. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Wildlife Extreme is a Vulcan benchmark. We scored a 2,804. And the final one I ran here was an 22. We got a really impressive 1,326,184. And I was actually really surprised to see this tablet score so high. It's only around 30,000 points off from the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and I think it really comes down to the cooling system they implemented. There's a lot of metal on the back here to absorb a lot of heat from that CPU, so we really don't have to worry about thermal throttling either. Another great feature they have built in here is known as GameSpace. So it's a dedicated application for the Xiaomi tablets or Xiaomi devices in general. And basically, we can set up our different games directly inside of here, and we can also set up different performance profiles. So for instance, uh, Genshin Impact, right here at the bottom, we can set up our GPU profile so we can actually make it look a little worse, but it's going to perform better. Or we can go to full quality. There's a bunch of different settings in here, and we can even go to custom. You can set a custom resolution for most games, and this does work really well for higher end emulators or even harder to run native Android games. But while we're in game, we can also set this. We can always come back to the game space by swiping over from the right hand side of the screen. And speaking of gaming, I definitely wanted to show some off here. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Minecraft, obviously not a super hard game to run, but I still wanted to show it off. We're running at a constant 60, and I didn't have a doubt that it wouldn't run this really well. It's been on the market for a while. Next up, Call of Duty Mobile, another game that natively supports controllers on Android, basically with no setup as long as you're using an Xbox or a PlayStation controller. I'm at the highest settings possible on Android with this game right now, and we're running at a constant 60 FPS. And finally, you know we had to test out Genshin Impact. Still, no native controller support for Android, so I did have to use the built-in touchscreen. I didn't want to have to use a third-party map or anything like that. We're at high settings, 60 FPS, and at the highest settings, we get a few more dips than you'll see here. But overall, I mean, it still looks great on this big display, and it's more than playable in my opinion. But now it's time to move over to some emulation, and the first one we have here is some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 4X resolution, Vulcan back in, and it does look great on this large display. No dips whatsoever in the frame rate. Uh, you could use OpenGL if you wanted to, but it was set to Vulcan. We're at a constant 60 with Chains of Olympus, which means, you know, the easier to emulate games, you can upscale even higher and run at full speed. Moving over to some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Auto Modalista, native resolution, Vulcan back in. Now with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, there are a few games for GameCube that still don't perform great. And I really chalk it up to the emulator itself, but a lot of optimizations have been had, and we're seeing some great performance on this tablet. And finally, PS2 using Ether SX2. We've got Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, 2X resolution, and I am using the OpenGL back end, but just like PSP, I mean, you can swap back and forth. Some games may perform better with the Vulcan back end, some might perform better with OpenGL, but when it comes to these higher end Snapdragon chips, I've had really good luck with OpenGL and the Ether SX2 emulator. So in the end, I think Xiaomi has done a bang up job with the new Pad 6 Max 14. This display is great, those eight speakers sound awesome. It's got that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Yeah, of course, it would have been nice to have that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but it's really not that far off, at least when it comes to CPU performance. The GPU on the 8 Gen 2 will eat this up, but overall, I think it's definitely a solid device. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. And remember, you can pick this up with 8 gigs of RAM, 12 or 16, and given the RAM, the storage will be reflected. But even that 8 gig is going to perform just the same as we saw here. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this tablet, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.